Welcome back to Workshop Friend. Um, although I'm standing next to my milling machine, today isn't going to be a milling machine video. Uh, video number 12 is coming up um, and um, I want to finish this project off for sure. But I need to take some time out to do some planning around my workshop and uh, often I find that I have to think ahead. And one of the things I want to uh, work out is how I'm going to make space for my Colchester student lathe which I'm hoping to ship from Pakistan back to the UK. So uh, that will need space and I think the best space for that is where my Super 7, Myford Super 7 is at the moment. So this needs to move and I'm planning to move it into the position where my ML7 lathe is and you've probably seen it uh, sitting idly in the workshop not doing anything. I've not used it for a long time so what I want to do is uh, sell this lathe to create space for that one to come over here. So the purpose of this video really is just to sort of advertise this uh, machine uh, but also to use it to make a new pulley. This lathe uh, has a VFD drive on it. This is a 0.37 kilowatt half horsepower motor which was originally on that machine. It worked fine on that machine but I found on the Super 7 it's just a bit underpowered so I want to um, replace this motor and I've got this this uh, three-quarter horsepower motor uh, three phase so I'll continue with the VFD drive which I find very useful I couldn't buy a second-hand motor which I was hoping to get of the right spec so I bought this new one and uh, that will go on there that gives me the opportunity to put this motor onto my beddings drill and uh, I like this drill uh, but one thing on it that's not very convenient is the speed change um, it's not very easy to change the belts so um, with the gearbox and uh, a fixed belt drive and a VFD um, drive I think that will be that will make a nice combination um, that will also uh, give me some sensitivity for finer work and maybe also for tapping uh, because I can vary the torque into the motor and I found on the lay that's often very useful so that would be nice now what that means is that the single phase motor that was on here which is a decent motor I've already taken off and I've mounted on the ML7 and uh, I've spent the last few days really just getting this machine tidy and up and running so I put the the single phase motor on here uh, I've got the no volt release switch on here and um, that's all set up. I've leveled the machine, uh, lubricated it, adjusted it and it's ready to use. So what I want to do today is just demonstrate that uh, this is a usable machine for anybody who's interested in purchasing it but also to make uh, or modify rather the pulley that was on that motor to suit the new motor that's going on there. That had a 14 millimeter diameter shaft and this is 19 so I need to open out this bore to suit, suit this motor and uh, as well as that I also need to recut the keyway so we'll be using the shaper for that too. So I had this machine uh, before I had the Super 7 and I used it for several years and I was very pleased with it although it's quite an old machine the wear on it is uh, minimal the lead screw is in good condition and uh, also the ways are too and uh, just uh, for my own satisfaction I, I measured the front shear which actually provides the location uh, for the saddle and uh, the maximum wear um, comparing the two ends which are uh, not worn with the the part of the bed which receives the most wear and the most use in about around about here and the maximum um, maximum reduction in this width is one thou so I don't think that's bad actually for a machine of this age um, it, it operates well um, everything's lined up and uh, we're going to use it now to to machine out this pulley um, it comes with some change wheels I have to admit not a full set um, but with these change wheels uh, you should be able to cut 11 12 14 16 22 24 28 and 32 TPI if you add a 50 tooth wheel to this set which are readily available online that will open up the range uh, significantly and if you add a 10, a 20 and a 40 you'll almost have a full set. Um, if you want to do metric you need to, need to add a 21 tooth wheel. 
I already mentioned the motor. This comes with uh, rubber mounts and uh, it's got a, a well fitted pulley. I made the pulley myself and it's keyed on there and is, um, is a good fit. So it's got back gear and everything is functional and operational. It's got lubricators on here. As is usual, they tend to give too much oil rather than uh, controlling it exactly as they want. It's got the tumbler reverse. It comes with this four-jaw chuck, which is uh, uh, quite a nice chuck, I would say. And it's got a faceplate. Um, unfortunately, no three-jaw chuck, which I'm sorry about, but uh, that could be a project. As long as you've got a four-jaw chuck, I think that's a, that's a better option than a three-jaw or four-jaw independent. Um, it's got all the features you need on the end here for the gear train. They're all there, and that's the spare peg. That operates the, the back gear. That's a specially cut, cut off Allen key to get in there and adjust that. Uh, the oiler here, that's not included. Um, and I'm sorry, the chuck key on the drill chuck isn't either. I've only got one of those, which I use for all my chucks. So whoever gets this will have to find the chuck key for that. That shouldn't be a problem. It also comes with a MyFord stand. Um, that's the original stand. And um, it's wired up. Now, I would recommend that you uh, check the wiring yourself. Um, it's up to my standard, but, uh, you know, I think that... Uh, that's something perhaps you should check yourself. So uh, gear change is uh, straightforward, and uh, this is on the higher speed. And then uh, we can go down to the slowest. So that's the slowest uh, belt drive. And then we can operate the back gear too. So this is the slowest back gear drive. It comes with a with a threading dial there, and uh, the lead screw looks like it's in very good condition. It shows very little sign of wear. The cross slide and the top slide are adjusted, and uh, they operate across the full traverse without any problems. Uh, there isn't much tooling with this. I'm sorry. In fact, there's no tooling. Uh, you need to provide your own uh, cutting tools, um, but there's a handy little four-way tool post there. So I think it's a tidy machine, um, and uh, as I say, I, I enjoyed using this for several years. I'd like it to go to a decent home, really. Oh yeah, the bearings. Um, uh, many years ago, I, I adjusted those, and um, it, they come with shims, actually. So I adjusted those and uh, since then I've not, not had to touch them and they're fine. So I would have kept the machine had I had the space, but I don't. I used it for a number of years before I got the Super 7 and reconditioned that. It was also handy to have a machine where I could interchange the chucks and the face plates uh, with the other one. So I'm going to use the machine to demonstrate that um, it's you know, a good machine and um, hopefully Whoever buys this will have confidence as a result of seeing this video that it's something that they could use. It comes with a stand. It comes with a proper MyFord stand. I've uh, leveled the machine. Um, of course, if you take the machine away, it won't be leveled anymore. But I've leveled it for today. And uh, it's got leveling screws here so and raising blocks. So I've leveled it, lubricated it, got it adjusted, and it's ready to use. So I thought today... It would be um, a good demonstration of the machine to make the pulley and it would also help me in my, my own projects.
So the original motor um, had a 14 millimeter diameter shaft and the new motor, the three quarter horsepower, has a 19 millimeter diameter shaft. So it's just a question of uh, boring out that hole uh, to the new size. It's not going to clear that that keyway but it doesn't matter because I'm going to put the new keyway in the same position so that's no problem. So I just need to bore that out to 19 millimeters. You can hear the interrupted cut there as I cut through the keyway. I'm just concentrating on making a step here on the end here at uh, approximately the right size, just a few thou under, and then I can confidently bore out the rest of the material without uh, running the risk of going oversize. Okay, we're getting close now. Now I don't have a plug gauge so I'm just going to have to use my internal calipers and micrometer and just want to give you a feel of uh, how true it's cutting. That's um, it's a little bit of drag because it's drag that you're really using as you gauge here. So as I pass this through the bore I think you can see there that it's a very consistent drag so for me that indicates that that bore is parallel and the trick now is to get the same drag on the micrometer that feels to be the same now in imperial units that's showing 0 0.7, 0 0.74, 7 and a half. And I believe we're looking for 0 0.748. So I would say that's very close. So 90 millimeters just over 0.748. So I would say we are within one thou of the final size, but probably a little on the tight side. So the question is do I take another cut or not? The only way I've got to try this is to take this out, lose my setting and try it on the motor. So I'm taking extra care over this. I should have made a little plug gauge to start with so that I don't have to do this. But, uh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, I would say we're one thou undersized. So we'll take another cut and try again.
I would say we're just slightly over. So what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer that and then take it out and try it on the motor. There we are. Can't detect any movement there. Yep, I think that's fine. So we've got to uh, cut the keyway now and mount the motor on the lathe. Now that's the finish in the bore. Just see where it's scuffed as it's gone over the shaft there. But that's a good fit, that's fine. So what we've got to do now is uh, recut that keyway to the new size. Okay, I've set the shaper up for cutting this uh, keyway. And uh, this is my the tool I use for cutting, cutting keyways. And um, I've got the pulley square with the axis of the machine. Uh, I've got adequate clearance all around. I've got the stroke correct. Um, all I need to do now is determine how to get the slot in the center of the of the hole. Now I did think about uh, trying to measure off the inside of the bore and uh, calculating the, the width of the slot and the width of the tool, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. I think I'm just going to eyeball this. So we're going to aim to uh, get that in the center of the bore. I'm going to have to take a little more off this side. A little more off that side and obviously increase the depth. So we're looking for a depth just in excess of that. We've got another 23,000 to go, so that's uh, just over. Okay, that's tight, but I don't think that's too tight. So, uh, yep, I think we're there. So the key's a good fit in the slot, but uh, it remains to be seen if it goes on here without too much uh, effort, we'll see. Now I'd previously put extraction bolt holes in there so that I can pull it off um, and I, I had to use that to get it off the the old motor um, there's no room to lever and, and I don't like levering off the body of the machine anyway so uh, I think this is uh, if, if it is tight on here I know I can get it off without damaging anything Yep, that's fine. 
So I'm going to go ahead now and swap the motors over and try this larger three quarters or three quarter horsepower or uh, 0.55 kilowatt motor on the Super 7 lathe and just see how that performs. Well, as expected, the pulley is a nice tight fit on there. That's what I want. Uh, so I'm having to pull it back off again to mount the motor on the lathe. Better to have a fit like this than things slopping around. So there's the set screw to go in there still, which locates on top of the key. And we left uh, about 10 or 15 thou of clearance uh, between the top of the key and the bottom of the slot. So that if it does throw up a burr, we can still get it off without uh, too much trouble. So yeah, I'm happy with this. I think this is uh, this is good, and it will be interesting to see uh, whether this motor can run the lathe up to full speed. Not that I use the high speeds very often, but it is nice to have that facility when I need it. And of course, I'm also thinking about how my Colchester student lathe will complement this machine. Obviously, there's a degree of overlap in their, um, you know, the the work that they can tackle. Um, but that together with my mini lathe, uh, the sort of watchmaker's lathe, um, that will, those three machines will cover everything I need to do on the turning front. So uh, yeah, I'll keep going with this. Join you again later. I do apologize for the sound quality at the end here. My microphone's just given up. So you've seen the lathe in use. It's for sale and I'm open to reasonable offers. If you'd like to contact me on workshopfriend at gmail.com without any spaces, then I can answer any questions. And as I say, I'm open to sensible offers. I'm not changing the nature of my channel. It's not becoming a, a channel where I'm gonna be selling lots of items. It's just that I want to move this on to create space in the workshop and I'd like it to go to someone who's going to use it. So next video I'm going to be returning to the Adcock and Shipley mill and hopefully we re hopefully I'll be completing the overarm support bracket and beyond that I'm going to think about a new topic for a new series. As always I do appreciate your comments, uh, consider subscribing if you've not done so already and do give me a thumbs up as well if you like the video. Thanks very much, I hope to see you next time.